Good morning, everybody. About to get started with the mixed doubles event here at the PabCon Champion of Champions, live from the Kegel Training Center in Lake Wales, Florida. I'm Lucas Wiseman, and we have uh, the opening game of the mixed doubles event. You can see Almi Guetta there on lanes five and six. We've moved the camera all the way down to one and two, which is where the, uh, the top three squads are starting. And uh, they did the lane assignments based on national all events after singles. And the United States in first place, Colombia second, and Canada in third. So those three doubles pairings are on the same pair of lanes as we see Liz Judds. Liz starts things off with a strike. And Marcelo Swartz, the Men's singles gold medalist. He's on five and six. And he starts off with a split. Pulling on the Beijing pattern this morning, the short pattern. Andres Gomez of Colombia. Leaves the six pin standing. Steve Smith. Ready to get things kicked off for his day. He struggled a little bit on the fresh on this pattern a couple of days ago. We'll see if he can uh, fare a little better today. And he starts off with a great looking strike there in the first frame. Nino Fernandez of the Dominican. I'll kind of try to give you a look at some of the other players other than our featured pair as we move along here. But uh, we'll show a lot of the action from the three leading squads after the singles event. Paula Gomez, who won the silver medal in the singles yesterday. And Felicia Wong from Canada, lefty. So three games this morning on the Beijing pattern. And then they will have a break for a couple hours and come back this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern in both three more games on the Montreal pattern to determine the medalists in the mixed doubles. Now the national all events will also be determined today. Don't have national all events in very many tournaments, so it is uh, the combination of both players singles and mixed doubles individual scores so for example steve smith and liz johnson their combined single score was 5460 they'll add whatever their mixed doubles total is to that and that will be their score in the national all events and that is a medal event so there will be a lot of medals awarded today Mixed doubles, women's all events, men's all events, and national all events. And they will be presenting the singles medals at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Pace of play, maybe a little bit slower today. There's six on a pair versus three on a pair the last two days. As they've got three doubles teams on each pair, the reason they did that is because uh, they can fit all of the bowlers on one squad doing it that way instead of spreading it out 
over multiple squads and making a long day for everybody. Take a look at Marcelo. Marcelo with an open in the first frame. Second frame for Liz Johnson. Liz Johnson and Steve Smith both started with strikes. And Liz turns it into a double to start off the day. Viviana Delgado of Costa Rica. Long leaves the split. So a good start to the day for Team USA, both players with doubles to start. Paola. Struggling a bit here at the start. Felicia Wong also struggling, so. For Colombia and Canada, it's uh, not been the first couple of frames that they had hoped for. But a great start for the Americans. And McClellan trying to get off to a double start, and he does. Trying to hold up Felicia early on here. Another open frame for Paola. Liz Johnson, lane one. Really kind of blew out the field in the final three games of the singles event yesterday. 8.02 and a split here in the third. So that will put an end to the perfect finish, perfect start to the day for Team USA. As Liz leaves the split here. There is live scoring available if you want to follow along frame by frame do so. We've got the link up for you on bowl.com. So you can kind of do like I am. You can have uh, one window open with the live stream, and another window open with the live scoring, and you can keep an eye on how your Favorite country is doing frame by frame here at the Kegel Training Center.
Take a look at Victor Tatiashi of Peru. Had a double to start today. Leaves the 5-10. Here's Wong trying to get her first mark of the day. And she leaves a seven pin. Will improve her first ball average. Joshua makes an observation in the chat that most players are playing to the right. They are, and that is uh, kind of how you have to play this pattern is uh, Steve Smith gets the front three. Steve got fooled on the first, uh, first round of singles and got lured into the middle part of the lane a little bit, and uh, it's not where you want to be on this pattern. Got to be to the right. And you can find the, the breakdown of what these patterns look like on world10pinbowling.com. That's world10pinbowling.com. And there is a uh, link to, the pa to patterns, and there's 12 different WTBA patterns. And uh, we are using Beijing today. So world10pinbowling.com, click on Patterns, and then you'll see Beijing listed. And then uh, the pattern for this afternoon will be the medium pattern, Montreal. Dan McClellan, he stays perfect on the day. So McClellan and Smith, both perfect thus far. Liz trying to rebound after the split in the third frame. She does, so three out of four strikes to start the day for LJ. And uh, that would be six out of seven strikes for Team USA to start the day as Steve Smith is three for three. Marcelo Swartz from Brazil with a strike there. Andres Gomez. Leaves a seven standing. Not real happy. And there's Almi Guetta. She's uh, had a bit of an injury last night playing some Frisbee. She twisted her ankle and showed me a picture of what it looked like last night, and it did not look good. It looked like she had a grapefruit living in her ankle. But the swelling has come down a little bit for Almi. See if Steve Smith can go four for four here. Yep. Gets the nine out. This is a better, much better start for Steve than he had in the singles event on this pattern. Let's take a look at El Salvador. John Carlo with a strike. Andres made his spare. I want to remind everybody that the Bowling Combine is going to be coming up this August, and that is a, a very interesting opportunity for any young bowlers out there who want to bowl in college. Put you through a whole range of tests while college coaches watch on. 
determine if they want to recruit any of the participants of the combine. So if you want more information on the bowling combine, go to bowl.com slash combine or bowlingitrc.com, and we will be having a, a feature for you on the bowling combine at the end of this game. So stay tuned for that special feature coming up after this game. Felicia finally on the board with a strike for Canada. Carlos Finks Jr. from Curacao. Crossing over to the left side. Missed the head pin. Here's Dan McClellan with three in a row to start the day. And Dan the man packs all ten back for the front four. So Dan McClellan and Steve Smith both with the front four here in game number one. Mercedes Perez from Argentina kicks out that nine pin for the strike. Andres Gomez, we're in the fifth frame now. Andres with a strike. with uh, a 3-9 it looks like from where I'm sitting. It's hard to tell on the screen but uh, there's definitely a sleeper back there. So yeah, the 3-9 on that shot for Liz. can make her spare before we go over to watch Marcelo bowl. Yep, Liz cleans up the mess. And here is Marcelo Swartz of Brazil. Marcelo open spare double to start the day. Santos is mixed doubles partner with the spare three bagger. Marcelo with three in a row now. Steve misses the head pin to the right, so that'll end his perfect start to the day. He gets seven, and leaves the one, two, four. So that means uh, Dan McClelland is the lone perfect bowler on our featured pair here, one and two. Let's see if Dan the man can get another one. That's high. Oh, trips out the four. Oh, Steve gets lucky to make the spare. Here's Manino.
Santos for Brazil with the, working on three strikes in a row. Sixth frame now for Liz Johnson. She mixes him up for the strike. Gomez with back-to-back -back strikes for Colombia. And Steve Smith trying to get back on the strike train here after a spare in the fifth. He had the front four, then went seven spare. He left the one, two, four. And now sixth frame for Steve. That one he pulled in and leaves just the three pin. Felicia Wong working on a double for Canada. She gets another one. Here's Marcelo Schwartz from Brazil. He's got three in a row after starting the, the day with an open and a spare. Gets another one, four in a row for Marcelo. Victor Tatiashi of Peru. Alberto Lozano of Costa Rica. No love on the four pin for Alberto. McClellan stays perfect. Front six for Dan. Feeling comfortable out there. And right now Canada surging a little bit here with Dan with the front six and after a rough start Felicia Wong has got three in a row now. Manino. Not get the strike. Liz leaves a 10 pin.
Not sure what the delay is here on our on lanes one and two. Something must be going on down there. I'm over here behind nine and ten, so one and two. A little bit far away from me. In fact, I can't even read the scoreboards from where I'm at. There's a wall between me and the scoreboard. There's a low-hanging wall between lanes uh, four and five here at the Kegel Training Center. Now they're going to go. Here's Paola shooting her 10 pin. Uh, missed single pin there for Paola, and she's off to a rough start today. Only 84 in the sixth for Paola. And Liz finally going to go now to shoot her 10 pin. Andres Gomez working on a double. And Andres turns it into three in a row. Marcella Swartz. Looking for a five-bagger, and he gets it. Yahtzee for Marcelo. Seventh frame for Steve Smith. Misses to the right of the head pin again on that lane, leaves the one, two. Someone in the chat wants to know where the live scoring is. You can find the link on bowl.com. It'll take you right to the live scoring. When you get to bowl.com, you'll see the uh, live streaming in progress graphic. And just below that is the link. This Felicia misses right, leaves the five pin. Smith covers up the spare, so three spares in a row for Steve Smith after starting with the front four. We're going to bring you over now to lanes uh, nine and ten, right after this spare from Felicia. We've got a little action happening. Uh, Argentina's Ruben Sullenhammer with the front seven. Right here, blue shirt. Lane number nine, see if he can uh, make it the front eight. Needs to hook. Comes up light and gets seven. So we'll have to rely on Dan McClelland to keep the hopes of a perfect game alive. Dan with the front six. And about to be up here in just a moment. There we go, front six. Looks a little right, but as you can tell, comes roaring off the edge of the lane on this pattern, especially with the ball that Dan's throwing. He looks like he's throwing an older urethane ball, perhaps. And it came roaring back and just annihilated all 10 pins for the front seven.
Eighth frame for Liz Johnson. She's 115 in the sixth frame and a spare in the seventh. And Liz gets the 10 pin rocking. Does not go down though. It's a little bit of a slow start to the day here for Liz Johnson. Mercedes Perez, Argentina, looking for a double. Stench leaves the Marcelo Swartz from Brazil, working on five in a row. Marcelo gets another one. Felicia struck as well for the Canadians. Almi with a strike. She's got four in a row now, not letting that ankle bother her this morning. It's, it's time for the Dan McClellan Show. Dan's got the front seven, trying to turn it into the front eight. Went high and leaves a split. A 4-10 split for McClellan here after starting with the front seven. Alberto Lizano, Costa Rica. Here's Paola. That one is going to leave a two pin. It looked like it was a little bright off her hand. Again, we'll have the singles medal ceremony coming up for you at 11.30 a.m., or approximately 11.30. Might be a little later than that. I'm guessing probably around 11.45 or so. And uh, then a couple-hour break between squads. We've got uh, the final three games of mixed doubles starting at 2 p.m. this afternoon, Eastern Time.
Ninth frame for Steve Smith. And Steve re-racking. The lane to his right. Looked like it, yeah, missing pins in the rack, so. Like they're still re racking over there. They might have to get the mechanic to do a little work on that lane. Let's see if it gets fixed uh, this time around. Yeah, it looks like it's a better rack. For those just tuning in, the Lane condition this morning is Beijing. This afternoon it'll be back to Montreal. Here's Andres Gomez in the ninth. So a strike there will give Andres the opportunity in the tenth frame to strike out for 225 here in game one. Liz Johnson's max score is 214. Get back over to Steve Smith in a moment. Let's watch uh, Carlos Sphinx Jr. from Curacao, who's got four in a row, ninth frame. Steve Smith, ninth frame. And Steve leaves a big nasty right there. Big nasty split, a three, four, six, seven, ten is what it looks like from my angle. And he had been bowling pretty well this game. If he can somehow make it, he can still bowl 228 this game. Here's Felicia. Felicia comes up light. So the three, four, six, seven, ten for Steve Smith here needs to hit the right side of the three pin and send it over into those other two little guys to the left. And it's an open frame for Steve. So Superman now with 186 in the ninth frame. Guatemala is Sofia Granda. Ninth frame for her. Don't have any first ball action to show you, so we'll show you a spare attempt by Connie Sar Saragaki of Peru. Here's Paula Gomez now. Santos from Brazil with the one, two, eight in the ninth frame. Andres Gomez gets the first one of the tenth. Andres still has a max score of uh, 225 out there.
Liz. Johnson, 10th frame. Max score 217 for Liz. Oh, sorry, 214 for Liz. As Liz gets a strike for a double. That one should get her in the 200s at least. The individual Masters and the Mixed Doubles Masters will take place tomorrow. Going to get underway at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, so be sure to tune in for that. As Andres gets the second one in the 10th, so that'll put Andres in the 220s. His teammate and sister, Paola Gomez, only can max out at 184 in this game. Let's see if Liz can get a second one in the 10th as well. Oh, Liz leaves the two pin, so she'll shoot 2 0 3 with the spare. Two twenty three for her Andres Gomez. Marcello in the 10th frame, working on a spare now after the long string and leaves a 10 pin. His uh, max score now 235. Take a look at Almi Guetta from the Dominican in the 10th frame. Almi with five in a row heading into the 10th. Gets another one. So Almi's max score, 257 this game. Steve Smith gets a strike on his first shot in the 10th frame. Can max out at 216. That would give Team USA 419 for the first game here in the mixed doubles event. Marcelo shooting his 10 pin here in the 10th frame. He covers it up. Almi, trying to get another one here in the 10th frame. And she does. So that'll put Almi in the 250s. That'll be one of the, the high games that we have seen out of the men or the women. Second shot in the 10th frame for Steve Smith. And that'll put him in the two teens. Marcelo 235. Game one coming to a close here. 
This is the final shot for Carlos Finks Jr. He uh, will shoot 200 and five, 205 for Carlos. Dan McClellan with a strike. Dan can max out this game at 264. Steve Smith 216, Liz Johnson 203 here in game one. So 419 for the Americans. They are. It's hard to tell exactly, but I, I think that they're going to trail the Dominican, Brazil, probably the Canadians. to wait and see if we get uh, standings after this first game ends. Felicia Wong, 194, and Dan McClellan going to shoot 264, so they will be well ahead of the Americans after the first game. Okay, we will have a special feature coming up for you after this game ends about the bowling combine, so stay tuned for that coming up in just a moment. Two sixty one for Dan McClelland as Canada shoots four fifty five for game one. Phil ball coming up here for Paola Gomez. The Colombians We'll shoot, uh, let's see here. Let's see what her final score is going to be. Nine for 183. So the Colombians shoot 406 in game one. So while we wait for game number two to begin, we will show you a special feature here from the bowling combine. So take a look at this. It's a chance to make their mark. Last year, more than 70 college hopefuls packed into the International Training and Research Center, all hoping to impress the gathering of top coaches who came to assess their talent. I definitely am learning a lot. Uh, it's, it's just great to be able to actually see my speed and know for sure where exactly my ball exited the pattern and what my entry angle was. All of that's great. Uh, it's just great knowledge to have. I thought that this was a great experience for everybody in high school, you know, that wants to bowl in college. It measures everything pretty much that goes on. This is going to make everybody so much better because they're going to know what they have to work on when they go home to get better. There will certainly be enough data. The bowling combine for college prospects puts these kids through the paces, from athleticism to spare shooting, shot repetition to personality testing. The ITRC is a one-stop shop. Well, I think facility matters a lot because you're going to get collection of data from computer-aided tracking information for shot repeatability and speed control. Also having the videos, when we see the data collection, we're going to get a good idea of the holistic picture, the whole complete. I think it's a great concept. If, if they had it every other month, I'd probably be here every other month if I knew there were going to be different kids here because this does allow us a big opportunity to see all these talented kids in one place under different conditions where in other situations you go and, and you see them at one tournament and you can't turn around and go back out to another place to see them again. So this is, I think this is this is awesome. This is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for the coaches and for the athletes. It's a chance for colleges to choose kids and for kids to choose a college. Both sides are looking for that right fit, and it may not necessarily be about who knocks down the most pins. The number one thing we look for is potential. Uh, we're looking for somebody with strong academics as well as potential for bowling. Doesn't mean that they're great at the moment 
but we're looking for key components that will lead them in the future with training to be the best that they could be. To find out more about future programs and how you can get involved, simply go to bowl.com slash combine. Bowl TV has a new address. All of the video features, coaching tips, and live events you've been watching for years are still available on Bowl.com, but now there's a new YouTube home for all things bowling. Bowl TV has its own channel, and it's so easy to find. YouTube.com slash Bowl TV. That's it. And you never know what you'll see. If you've previously been following us on the Grow the Sport channel, it will still be there, but very soon all new videos will only be available on the Bull TV channel. So please take the time to subscribe today. That way you'll be among the first to know as soon as a new video is posted or a live event gets underway. There are big things happening on Bull TV. Don't miss a minute. Click on subscribe and let the good times roll.
Game two now underway. As uh, we continue on the Beijing pattern here for the second game of the day. We've uh, adjusted the, the camera down on one and two to face it now at three and four, which is where Columbia, Canada, and the United States have moved. Also now in our view, it's uh, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, and Mexico. They're on five and six. We still have the Dominican, Brazil, and Guatemala. And Costa Rica, Aruba, and El Salvador. Again, you can follow along on the live scoring on Kegel's website. You can find the link to that on bowl.com. Newcomers to the live broadcast since they were on three and four last game. We didn't get to see them. Only one camera down on that side of the house. But now five and six. We've got a camera on that. There's uh, Jean Perez of Puerto Rico. Both Americans have started with a strike this game. Dan McClellan starts with a strike this game. So the five of the six on this pair start with strikes. Andres Gomez, the only one who did not. Here's Amleto Monticelli, Venezuelan, crossing over. Mexico's Ezeret Zetter. Ezeret leaves the 10 pin. There's Liz in the second. Carlo from El Salvador. Question in our chat, is there an age limit for the combine? Uh, there's no age limit, you have to uh, have collegiate eligibility. Steve Smith with a 10 pin. There's Sofia Granda, leaves the 2-4. Nishka Cardona of Puerto Rico gets the four pin to fall backwards for the strike. Here's Ernesto Franco.
Dan McClellan, second frame of game two. Here's Manino from the Dominican. This is the head pin to the right. Alberto Lozano looking for a double for Costa Rica. Take a look at uh, Karen Marcano. Liz has started with the front three for Team USA this game. Just getting the standings in after the first game. And uh, it is Canada in the lead, 455 along with Dominican. So the Dominican and Canada both at 455. Brazil in third at 441. Puerto Rico in fourth at 437. The United States is fifth, 419. Argentina 6th at 412. Guatemala 7th at 401. El Salvador is in 8th place. Curaçao 9th. Mexico 10th. Aruba 11th. Costa Rica 12th. Virgin Islands 13th. Venezuela in 14th. And they have a, an error in the standings. Gomez and Gomez, Colombia. They have them listed at 106. That so should be 406. So I don't jump them up into uh, seventh place on the standings. We'll have to make sure that they know to get that fixed. So again, uh, the Dominican and Canada are tied for the lead right now with 455, and Brazil in third at 441. Here's Ernesto Franco from Mexico. Neshka Cardona from Puerto Rico. Spare strike to start this game for Neshka. He's got a hook. And leaves the 2-4. McClelland down on lane three. Through the face, leaves the 4-6-7. He had started with a double this game.
Evgeny. Second squad of the mixed doubles scheduled to begin at 2 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon. Still got uh, the rest here of game two and game three this morning. Liz Johnson, fourth frame, working on the front three. Liz leaves a 10 pin to end her string of strikes. Marcano for Venezuela. Here's Manino shooting the washout and he Converts it in the third frame for the Dominican Republic. Here's John Perez of Puerto Rico. Those of you in the chat that are watching us here on the broadcast today, what country are you watching from? Curious to know. I know Billy from the uh, Dominican and Pat is in Finland. Who else do we have in there and uh, where are you watching us from? Australia, we're watching. There's Azaret of Mexico. So we've got some uh, Arubans that are watching, so we will uh, give you a shot of Jason Oder here from Aruba working on a double. Hello to Brazil as well. Steve Smith, strike spare double for Steve. Hong Kong in the house. Folks from all over the place watching today. Thanks to everybody for tuning in from around the globe here on Bowl TV. Hope you uh, appreciate our coverage. And for you Brazilians, here's Marcelo Swartz. Also have uh, Guatemala checking in. Canada, of course. Somebody from Michigan and Florida, Texas. Here's Almi. Cardona. Spare strike spare to start this game for Cardona and another spare attempt coming up. from Boston. Thanks for watching. Broadcast today of the PabCon Champion of Champions live from the Keigel Training Center. I'm Lucas Wiseman and we are in game two of the mixed doubles event. Here's Manino. 
in the fourth. Indonesia checking in. And someone else from Aruba as well. Definitely have a worldwide audience here on Bowl TV, that's for sure. For our Guatemalan viewer, There you go. Andres Herrera with the strike for Guatemala. John Perez from Puerto Rico. And now Andres Gomez of Colombia. Amleto Monticelli, always a crowd favorite. Santos from Brazil. Front four for Santos. Marcelo Swartz also with the front four. So Brazil coming on strong here in game two. Steve Smith, strike, spare, double so far this game, trying to make it three in a row. Steve gets the 10 to go down for the three bagger. Pennsylvania, New Jersey also checking in in the chat. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Make sure you follow USBC on Facebook. Facebook.com slash USBC1. You can also follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash USBC. So on Twitter, we're at USBC. And you can follow me on Twitter as well, at Lucas underscore Wiseman. Twitter.com slash Lucas underscore Wiseman on Twitter. And feel free to tweet at me if you want. I always read all of the uh, the tweets that are sent at me. Usually get a little uh, notification on my phone here when I get a message. So feel free to tweet at me at Lucas underscore Wiseman. Viviana Delgado from Costa Rica with a strike. Shana from Aruba. Here's Dan the Man McClellan. Dan's had a pretty good day today. He's had a couple of opens, though. He shot 261 with an open the first game, and he's got an open this game. Double open double for Dan to start. Are watching from Bermuda. MVP Puller, Buller is in uh, Las Vegas.
Azaret Zetter with a strike. Azaret's gone spare four bagger this game so far. Take a look at Andres Gomez. Andres going at a Dutch 200 pace. Spare, strike, spare, strike, spare. And he ends the uh, rhythm there with a 10 pin. Here's Ernesto Franco in the sixth frame. Someone asking for the Facebook link. Uh, you can find USBC on Facebook at facebook.com slash USBC and then the number one. And that link is at the top of the page right now that you're looking at. There's a little Facebook icon. And you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Lucas USBC. It's L U C A S USBC. Santos for Brazil has the front five. Marcelo went front four and then made a single pin. So Brazil still bowling very well here in this game. In fact, Marcelo is up right now, so let's flip over to lane eight where we find Marcelo Swartz of Brazil. Marcelo gets nine on that shot. Team USA bowling well this game as well. Liz Johnson struck on her first three shots, nine spare double. Steve Smith strike spare four bagger. So the Americans are surging here in game two as well. Don't forget you can find the live scoring link on bowl.com. Check that out. See the frame by frame results for all of the lanes here at the Kegel Training Center, all 12 lanes. Here's Azaret. Another strike for Azaret. It's five in a row for her. Amleto. Sixth frame for Amleto Monticelli. Here's Menino in the sixth frame. Almi with an open in the sixth. Menino looking for a double 
and leaves the four pit. Question in our chat. How do the bowlers get picked to represent their country? Every country does it differently. Some of them have a competition to determine who gets picked. Others are just uh, picked by coaches. For the United States, you gotta make it on the Team USA first and then the coaching staff selects who comes and competes in the event. Johnson and Steve Smith really pouring it on this game. Liz with six out of seven strikes this game. Steve with five out of six. Steve Smith about to go here in just a moment. We'll take a look at John Perez first. From Puerto Rico. You can see Steve Smith down there on the right bottom right corner of your screen. taking his time down there. So we'll go over to Santos from Brazil, who's got the front five. And gets another one as the four pin falls forward. Front six for Santos. And Marcelo Swartz went front four, nine spare, nine spare. So the Brazilians are bowling well this game. Smith definitely taking his time down there. Now Steve is ready to go. Steve working on four consecutive strikes here in the seventh frame. Let's see if he can make it five. Four pin. Miguel just tweeted at me. Says, nice work, awesome tournament. Hello from Mexico. So, hola Miguel. Miguel, thanks for watching. Thanks for the tweet. Sofia Grande of Guatemala. Paulo Gomez. Oh, 
Paolo, Paolo with a strike in the seventh. She's got 122 in the sixth frame. Andres Gomez, 190, 119 in the sixth frame for Andres. Ernesto. Liz Johnson trying to make it four in a row. Lucky to get the two out. Leaves the 10 standing though. Santos, front six. Make it seven in a row for Rosalie Santos. Viviana Delgado, the split for Costa Rica. Marcelo Swartz up now as Brazil is putting together a big game here in game two. The front seven for his teammates, Rosalie Santos, and Marcelo, 148 in the sixth, the strike in the seventh, and he just turned it into a double. Here's Steve Smith. Steve leaves a 10 pin. Question our chat. Are Paola and Andres related to each other? Yes, they are brother and sister. Ida Granillo of El Salvador. Here's Almigueta of the Dominican Republic in the eighth frame. Question, can the bowlers see their catch results while they're competing? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. There are some monitors down there, but I don't think it's showing them their catch results while they bowl. Pattern is Beijing. 35 feet. Split for Paola. Take a look at Azaret Zetter of Mexico. The 
There's a rep, bowling good this game. 176 in the seventh frame and a strike now in the eighth for Azaret. Here's Liz. Liz having a good game as well. 198 in the eighth frame and that strike just came in the ninth for Liz Johnson. Santos about to be up for Brazil with the front seven. So we're going to flip over to that right after the shot from Neshka. And here is Santos about to step on the approach. She's just waiting for uh, Karen Marcano to go off to her left. So we'll take a look, a look at that shot while we await the shot from Santos. So here is Rosalie Santos of Brazil with the front seven. Trying to make it eight. Looks good. Ring ten. A great run for Santos. We can see that Steve Smith has left a split in the ninth frame. Three, four, six, ten split for Smith and an open frame for Steve Smith in the ninth. That'll give him 203 in the ninth frame. And what had otherwise been a good game for Steve. Clellan. A strike for Dan as he continues to bowl well. Here's Azaret Zetter of Mexico in the ninth frame working on a strike. Oh, a big split here for Azaret. Three, six, seven. Tenth frame for Liz Johnson. She can strike out for 258. And Liz gets the first one in the tenth. Let's 
see if Azaret can make the split. Nope. She knew when she let it go she wasn't going to make it. Marcelo trying to maintain the momentum here for Brazil. He's working on a double. The Brazilians putting up a big game here in game two. And Marcelo gets another one. Second shot in the 10th for Liz. Chance to get into the 250s with a strike here. And Liz with another one. Let's see if Liz can fill it up here in the 10th frame. And she does, so 258 for Liz Johnson here in game two. A great game for Liz. Steve Smith can strike out for 223. Andres Gomez, second shot in the 10th. He has the ability to strike out for 239 here. And Andres gets another one. Steve Smith, 10th frame time. So Steve can still get to 223 this game. He had an open in the ninth, 193 in the ninth frame, so hinder his efforts a little bit this game, but still a chance to get in the 220s. Andres Gomez, fill ball. He shoots 228, 238 here this game. Jason Oder from Aruba with a seven pin. Back over to Steve Smith, second shot in the 10th. Steve gets another one, so he will be in the 220s now. And Team USA will shoot a potential score here. Uh, 481.
Here's Almi in the 10th frame. Max score 201. Steve Smith backed off on his fill ball, so now he's finally up again. So 223 for Steve Smith, 258 for Liz Johnson. As game two is coming to a close. Marcelo Swartz opened in the 10th frame. And only shoots 232. Went 6 3 in the 10. One more game this morning in the mixed doubles competition. Then we'll have the medal ceremony for the singles event. The second squad of doubles scheduled to get underway at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Here's Amleto. Amleto, this is his second shot in the 10th, can shoot 226 this game. Nazareth Zetter will be in the 230s this game. Paula Gomez shoots 196. Andres had 238, so they're at uh, 432 this game. Dan McClellan. Strikeout for 241. Felicia Wong shot 183. Open frame for the Dominican in the 10th. So 201 for Almi, 183 for Manino. Here's Rosalie Santos. Of Brazil. She had the front seven with nine spare strike. And Marcelli with uh, 
a 2-4 here in the 10th. So a potential 2.59 for Santos. Jeff wants to know for streaming the medal ceremony. That's the plan at this stage. Show the medal ceremony after this third game. It's coming up after this. Wrapping up game number two right now. The final shots of game two. Santos with the spare. So that'll put her in the 250s here in game two. Marcel from the Aruba sends me a tweet, says hi from Aruba, so hello to Marcel. Aruba, one of those countries I need to get down to. I want to get down to Curaçao, Aruba, Bonaire down there and uh, do a little scuba diving. Maybe one of these days, get down there. So this game has come to a close. As soon as we have an update on the standings, we will let you know. They're getting uh, geared up for the next game as we speak. We'll take a commercial break and be back in just a couple of minutes with the start of the third game here at the PabCon Champion of Champions Mixed Doubles event. TV has a new address. Yeah! All of the video features, coaching tips, and live events you've been watching for years are still available on bowl.com, but now there's a new YouTube home for all things bowling. Bowl TV has its own channel, and it's so easy to find. YouTube.com slash bowl TV. That's it. And you never know what you'll see. If you've previously been following us on the Grow the Sport channel, it will still be there, but very soon all new videos will only be available on the Bull TV channel. So please take the time to subscribe today. That way you'll be among the first to know as soon as a new video is posted or a live event gets underway. There are big things happening on Bull TV. Don't miss a minute. Click on subscribe and let the good times roll. I'm one of those guys where uh, whatever I put my mind to, I usually get pretty good at it. And it wasn't impressive for me to shoot big numbers on a house pattern, what a lot of people are doing all over the place. And I wanted to push myself to a next level. And so, you know, that's what I did. I, you know, joined a sport league and I practice on sport patterns and you know work with guys that, that are like-minded and you know that's how that's how I want to make myself better. Has it been helpful for you when you've gone out into competition or into tournaments? Uh, the sport bowling experience. I mean, a little bit more prepared when when you come across tournament conditions. Tremendously, especially when they put out a pattern that's a little more flat or a little more challenging. Uh, you know, tournaments sometimes tell you what it is, sometimes they don't. So if they don't, and I can recognize right away it's a little more challenging. Usually, 
you know, there's a few, a handful of us that have the upper hand knowing that I got to place a little bit tighter or around this area as opposed to just jumping into the track, which is easy to do on a house pattern. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty good advantage, actually. Back with the start of our third game. Working on uh, standings. Women's all events, Liz Johnson first, Paolo Gomez second, and Sofia Granda in third. Of course, Marcelo Swartz leading the men's all events. So we're in the uh, second frame of game number three, the final game of this morning block. Singles medal ceremony will come up after this game. We will uh, broadcast that for all of you who want to watch the medal ceremony coming up in just a little bit. Take a look at Nishka Cardona in the second, looking to start this game with a double. Liz Johnson strike in the first frame, but a two pin here in the second. Here's Marcelo in the second frame for Brazil. I think Brazil's probably in the lead after two games. 
They are uh, 132 over. Team USA 100 over. Dominican Republic 39 over. Puerto Rico 62, 64 over it looks like. So as soon as we get the standings, we'll let you know. Karen Marcado from Venezuela. It's been a struggle today for the Venezuelans. Marcano at only 343 for the first two. Amleto only 381. It has not been a struggle for Dan McClellan today. He's 498 for the first two games. But so far this game, struggling a bit. An open in the first and a uh, seven count in the second frame. Clavin missed the 3-6-10 in the second, so it's back-to-back -back open frames for Dan McClellan. Here are the standings now. They're oh, not sorted properly. Let's see if I can figure it out here. Brazil in first at 932. 900 for Team USA as they are in second place. Looks like it's about to get sorted here. Canada in third at 875. Puerto Rico in fourth at 864. Colombia is fifth at 840. Dominican sixth at 839. And Argentina in seventh at 810. So Brazil leading at 932. USA second at 900. Wong and McClellan from Canada are third at 875. Those are the top three right now after two games here in the mixed doubles event.
Felicia Wong for Canada. Third frame in progress here. Sofia Granda of Guatemala comes up light, leaves the 2-8. Here's John Perez of Puerto Rico. John, 5-0-3 for the first two. Strike open so far this game. Missed a single pin last frame, but no single pin to shoot this time around. Thanks to everybody who has uh, sent a tweet this morning. You can follow me on Twitter, at Lucas underscore Wiseman. You can feel free to tweet at me. Miguel and Marcel both have tweeted at me this morning, and also Jay as well. And uh, you can follow USBC on Twitter, at USBC. And don't forget to check out the new Steve Smith uh, Facebook page that uh, was put up overnight, Steve Smith. Just search for that, I think you'll be able to find Steve Smith Team USA Facebook page. For all the Steve Smith fans out there, growing group of fans of Team USA Superman. Dan McClellan from Canada. He's uh, struggling a bit this game. That's his first mark of the game in three frames. Amleto. Oh, and Amleto sends a pin doing some cartwheels across the deck for a double. Liz Johnson, strike, spare, strike to start this game for LJ. Trying to get the first double of the game for Team USA. That's way right. Oh, look at it come back and strike, though. I think Liz will take that to the bank. And be sure to stay tuned after this game. We will have the medal ceremony for the singles event. Marcelo Swartz, who you see there on the left side of your screen, will be getting the men's singles gold medal. And Liz Johnson will be awarded the women's singles gold medal coming up after this game. And the, uh, the second squad of singles, I'm sorry, of doubles, the final three games of doubles coming up this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time right here on Bowl TV, so be sure to come back and watch that in a couple of hours. Steve Smith 
that single pin staring back at him. Sofia Granda. There's Karen Marcano of Venezuela. Clellan. Canadians are having a rough go of it here in this third game. And they are in third place right now, but the way things are going, they will be dropping if this pace continues for them. Here's Brazil's Santos. The Brazilians in the lead by 32 pins over the Americans after two games. Santos with a strike in the fourth. Open strike, spare strike for Santos. Marcelo Schwartz has uh, gone clean through four frames, but no double. Liz looking to make it three in a row here in the fifth frame to approach the halfway point of game three. Liz rings a 10 pin. Franco writes up the split. Not too happy with it. Here's Andres Gomez. He's got the front four this game. Make it five in a row for the Colombian. Almi with a 3 6 10 in the fifth. She was working on a double before that. Just tuning in, you're watching our live coverage of the PabCon Champion of Champions from the Kegel Training Center. I'm Lucas Wiseman. This is the mixed doubles event. One male and one female from each country are represented in this tournament for the Team USA squad. It's Steve Smith, who you see there in the left lane, and Liz Johnson. And we're in the fifth frame of game three. Steve delivers a strike in the fifth. No double yet this game for Steve, but he is clean, 77 in the fourth frame.
and McClellan continuing to struggle here in game three. Felicia Wong also struggling. Wong only 73 in the fifth for Canada. And Dan McClellan pretty close to that as well. So McClellan trying to pick up the two pin. Kind of tripped out the two, four, five on that shot and makes the spare. Andres Gomez is about to be up on the left lane. Andres with the front five. Let's see if he can turn it into a six pack. That one didn't ever have a chance to strike. Leaves the 2-8 in the sixth. So Andres' run will come to an end in the sixth frame. Liz Johnson. Strike spare, double spare for Liz halfway through this game, sixth frame. Our leaders are the Brazilians and Marcelo Swartz and Santos, Roseli Santos. They've yet to double halfway through game number three. Uh, but only one open, and that's way right. And very fortunate to only leave the 10 pin standing on that shot. And the standings after two games here this morning. Brazil in the lead at 9.32. United States is second with 900. Canada third at 8.75. Puerto Rico in fourth at 8.64. Colombia is fifth at 8.40. Dominican in sixth place at 839. Argentina in seventh at 810. Guatemala eighth place, 799. And Curacao in ninth at 792. Mexico rounds out the top 10 with 789. And then the, the bottom seven would be Aruba, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Venezuela, Ecuador, Virgin Islands, and Peru. Dan gets a strike for Canada in the sixth. I'm oh, sorry, he did not get a strike. The 10 pins stayed up. Hard to see from this angle. 
And Wong with another open for the Canadians, so they are going to plummet down the standings. Here's Amleto. Amleto misses the head pin to the right. And some folks struggling out there this game. This transition has really slowed down the scoring a little bit. Here's Azaret. Strike for Zetter in the sixth frame. Colombians are bowling a pretty good game this time around. As they will uh, likely make a charge up the standings. Seven pin for Gomez there. Andres, uh, 157 in the sixth frame. Paola has gone open spare four bagger this game. So the Colombians putting together the biggest doubles tally thus far this game. And they were in fifth place coming into this game and it looks like that's gonna change as they will probably move up the standings. I'm sure they'll jump Canada. Canada. It's uh, Felicia Wong with another open frame for Felicia. Four opens in a row for her. Paola. Paola with a four pin there. Ends her string of strikes at four. Cleland finally finds a strike out there, his first strike of the game for Canada.
Steve Smith. Strike in the eighth frame for Steve. As we head to a close here in game number three. We'll have a medal ceremony coming up after this game for the singles event. Now this game, it's the Colombians, the Americans who are kind of surging a little bit. Brazil, Canada, struggling to find much this game. Puerto Rico also struggling a little bit this game as well. As are the Dominicans, so an opportunity for Colombia and the United States to pull ahead after three games. Right now the Colombians about 40 pins or so behind Team USA. If I had to guess, I would say U.S. and Columbia will be 1-2 going into the break. Andres Gomez, ninth frame, double for Andres. He can shoot to 67 this game. Alicia Wong finally finds a double out there this game. By the way, Liz Johnson, four in a row. She'll have a chance to shoot another 250 game here in game three. Liz's max score heading into the 10th frame, 259. Steve Smith steps up now. He can strike out of the ninth and 10th frames for 226. but a 2-10 split for Steve and a potential open frame coming for Team USA. And McClellan misses the head pin to the right on a double. 
as he continues to be frustrated by lanes five and six. See if Steve can give this split a run here. Oh, Steve Smith makes the 210. Nice split conversion there in the ninth frame. We'll still give him a chance to get over 200 this game. This is the third game. Three more games will be coming up at 2 p.m. Eastern time, so a couple hours from now. There will be a singles medal ceremony. We're hoping to bring that to you during the break. Lewis Johnson, 10th frame, can strike out for 259 this game. Liz gets the first one in the 10th. That's five in a row for LJ. See if Liz can get another one here. Got it. All 10 back. And Liz will be in the 250s here in game two. Shot of the morning session for Liz Johnson. Liz gets seven on the fill for a 256. And a great 7 17 set for Liz Johnson, including back to back 250 games at the last two games. Here's Marcelo Swartz, 10th frame for Brazil. Strike out for 214 this game. Yeah. Andres Gomez can shoot 267. Gets the first one in the 10th. Steve Smith, max score of 206 this game. Messenger comes across, takes out the 10 for the first hit in the 10th. Andres gets another one, so that'll put him in the 260s of this game. He'll shoot uh, 
7.20 plus for the first three games of the mixed doubles. Steve with a four pin there, so he'll shoot 196 with the spare. That'll give Team USA 452 this game. So it'll be pretty close uh, for first and first, second, and third. As Gomez strikes out for 267. Marcelo with uh, the double here in the 10th frame has pulled out a game in the two teens. Two thirteen for Marcelo Swartz as he pulls a clean game. Roselli Santos, his teammate, can strike out for 207. She's working on a double entering the 10th frame. Check in with her in a little bit when she's up. Alicia Wong has rebounded after a rough patch in the middle of this game to throw three strikes in a row. Paula Gomez can strike out for 216. That would give Columbia 483 this game. Paola looking for the second strike on the 10th here. She's already in the 200s, as we put her in the two teens. And Paola gets another one. So big game here in the third game for Columbia. As they will move up the standings. Clellan closing things out here. 169 for Felicia Wong and Dan McClellan only gonna shoot 167 this game. So a bad game for the Canadians. They're gonna fall quickly down the, the leaderboard after being in third place coming into this game.
Roselli Santos, 10th frame. Working on a double, can get to 207 this game. That would give Brazil 420. But they will uh, drop out of the lead after this game. It is a solid nine pin. Frustrate Santos. Santos makes the spare, so she'll be in the 180s. So we are going to try to show the uh, medal ceremony in just a few minutes. You may lose the stream for a couple of minutes here, but right after this uh, game ends. But uh, press refresh in a little while, you should be able to get it back. You need to restart the, uh, the computer real fast before the medal ceremony, so hang on. And uh, you may need to press refresh in a couple of minutes. We'll have the standings for you, hopefully, when we get back as well. run through the, uh, the standings for you here as they are getting them squared away. And uh, in the lead after the first three games is Team USA at 13.52. Brazil is second at 13.29. Colombia is third at 13.22. Puerto Rico fourth. Dominican fifth. Costa Rica sixth. Curaçao seventh. Argentina eighth. Canada drops all the way down to eighth or ninth place with that 3.33. Guatemala tenth. El Salvador eleventh. Venezuela is twelfth. Aruba. 13th, Mexico 14th, Ecuador 15th, Virgin Islands in 16th place, and Peru in 17th. So just awaiting the start of the singles medal ceremony, so hang on and we'll be back with you in just a, a couple of minutes.
award for best pacer goes to. And the winner is. Pacer, pacer. Twenty-four. <laughs> is it the pick of fifty? <laughs> You're on right now, so be careful. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody, everybody can see you. <laughs> so that means you can't make fun of me now. Come on. I guess Abby Lowe wants to say hello to everybody in the <laughs> All three of them? <laughs> <laughs>
Before I bring them in, uh, I'd like to thank again the United States Bowling Congress uh, for covering this and Lucas Wiseman for taking this time to come out uh, and uh, broadcasting this in the world of bowling. It's uh, great coverage, and I know the fans around the world uh, love to see this. And uh, from the standpoint of from Kegel and, and everybody who loves bowling, again, thank you, United States Bowling Congress. Give my hand. Okay, let's bring out the men's winner of the singles.
very, very tight. Remember, next round is medium, three games, and start in about an hour.